in early 2019 at Tiger River Correctional Institution in South Carolina. The cell block I had spent several years in on that yard got shut down because it needed repairs due to the, you know, it's not up to building code and things like that. And so all the inmates were sent to other cell blocks across the yard, and I was sent to cell block three. And once I got there, I would be put into a cell right next door to (laughs) what would unexpectedly become, to my realization, the most powerful inmate in that cell block. Here's the story. Now, when I came into this cell block, no one told me anything about this inmate but I would soon find out just of their existence uh, all on my own with a firsthand account. And like I said, I was right next door to this person. And when I opened my cell door one day to go out, to use the bathroom, start my morning routine, something ran into my cell immediately. And it's, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It scared the crap out of me because I mean, it was a cat and you know, I'm not familiar with, big furry animals running into my room. You know, this is, you know, other than spiders, you don't see creatures in your cells. And so it ran in there. I'm like, what is that? I thought it was the biggest rat I've ever seen besides the guy who snitched on me and made me catch all this time. But it was a cat. And I'm like, you know, immediately confused. What is a cat doing here? Uh, You know, I've spent several years in prison at this point. I've never seen any cat inside of a cell block. Now, I will say when you go out onto the yard, there are no shortage of cats, skunks, possums, all type of things. Um, but but you see plenty of cats and, the, you know, the kind of sad thing is they're always a little messed up in some way. They're missing an ear. They don't have a tail or they got one eye or they're just, they're, I mean, they're what you'd expect. I mean, of a prison cat. All right, for all strays around there, and they just eat probably whatever they catch and whatever you know the inmates throw out of the back door of the kitchen once all the dorms have been fed. But this cat, I mean, it looked like a normal, well taken care of cat, and it threw me off. And no sooner than I realized, hey, there's a cat in my prison cell, somebody else, an actual person, came to my cell door and said, "Hey, uh, hey, sorry about that. That that's my cat." Let me grab it. And I'm like, that's your cat. You know, what's going on here? So basically, it turns out the lieutenant in charge of this cell block. Now, see, in my state, the way it works on a prison yard, there's probably 10, 11, 12, 13 cell blocks. uh, And each cell block has a sergeant and lieutenant in charge of that specific cell block. Our lieutenant was called Lieutenant Duncan. And it was an older woman uh, who resembled Clint Eastwood, not only in looks, but in personality and demeanor. And so everyone kind of called her Clint Eastwood, uh, but not because they hated her. Because the thing about Lieutenant Duncan was, like I said, she, she's pretty strict. She, 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 you know, she's pretty hard. OK, um, she doesn't take any funny business, no nonsense. She runs a tight ship, but uh, it's never unfair And when she does come to work that day in a noticeably good mood, she will pass that vibe along to the other inmates. And, 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 you know, the other inmates are glad when she comes in a good mood and she will do something that she knows us inmates will appreciate when she's in these good moods. You know, when no fights have happened, when no one's gotten stabbed over the weekend, when she's not working, she's it's kind of like a teacher coming back after they've had a substitute. I didn't, I got a good report from, you know, on, on you guys, you guys behaved real well. Um, and so for that, basically, although she was tough, although she was hard, uh, the inmates respected her because she wasn't unfair about it. And overall on the entirety of the prison yard with the other staff and everything, even the higher ranks, Lieutenant Duncan had a lot of pull. Okay, because she was good at her job and she maintained control over her cell block, which is something a lot of lieutenants, a lot of sergeants couldn't do. So Lieutenant Duncan could do some things that other staff members couldn't do. And one of those things, as we learned, she has a big soft spot for cats, as do I. 
which is why I love telling this story. Lieutenant Duncan, I imagine she bonded with one of these prison yard cats, these strays around here, maybe as a baby. I don't know how long it's been there in that cell block uh, that she was in charge of. But for whatever reason, maybe she's allergic, maybe she has dogs who aren't going to tolerate a cat. I don't know. She didn't take that cat home. Instead, she brought that cat to an inmate in her dorm that she trusted. Why did she trust him? I imagine it's because they never cause trouble. They never get into fights. Anytime there's a shakedown or a cell search of the of the whole, you know, cell block, everyone's cell gets shaked down. They probably never find anything. You're not holding pounds of drugs and tobacco and contraband. You know, this guy's just here to do his time, read a couple books and 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 you know, maybe do a couple push-ups and, and call it a day. Right. And he had been in there for quite a while with the same routine and had proven himself a non troublemaker. She entrusted him to take care of this cat. And he did for the first and last time ever in my prison experience. I saw a litter box. They don't sell litter boxes and cat litter on the canteen, folks. This was brought in from the outside for you to even be able to bring that in from the outside and put it in an inmate's cell as a staff member. You know, you got a lot of power. Uh, there was a litter box in there with cat litter. There was cat food. You know, everything this cat needed to be taken care of, it was provided to this man. Now, I understand that's that's nice. That's very wholesome. That's sweet. But how does that equate to this cat running the prison cell block? How is it the most important living thing in this entire cell block? Well, I'll tell you why. Because Lieutenant Duncan, with all her power and all her you know, ability to command over this cell block full of grown men, because she loved this cat so much, when shakedowns happen, and I don't mean just like, you know, th there's different types of shakedowns. And a shakedown, if you don't know, it's basically when uh, corrections officers come to an inmate's cell and put them in handcuffs, bring them out of the cell, and they search their entire room for contraband. When shakedowns happen, it can either be a targeted shakedown where someone, you know, the staff got a tip or they have a strong suspicion. Maybe someone saw something, you know, or maybe someone said something, you know, an inmate, anything. They're targeting you specifically. They're just coming straight to your cell, maybe at 2, 3 a.m. to try to catch you off guard. And then there are mass shakedowns. And they might go to four cells and then leave. They might go to four cells at a time until they finished every cell in that cell block uh, uh, one day. Okay, it's, it's different types for different reasons, but no matter what kind of shakedown it is, they would never shake down the cell with the cat inside of it. And even like, I mean, you know, targeted, this guy's not going to be targeted. He's obviously in the good graces of Lieutenant Duncan. No, you know, she's not going to approve of any targeted cell search of this guy, right? Um, but these mass shakedowns, these are assumed to be, you know, so important. They have separate teams that don't even work at that specific prison yard come in. They got the red team, the burgundy team, the black team, the, you know, the tie dye team. I mean, you know, they, they got all these teams, you know, and, and, and when they come in, it's kind of like, all right, we're above all that. We do what we want. But even then, even then, they would shake down the entire cell block and skip. I mean, we would be out there in handcuffs and watch them with our own eyes skip the room that had the cat in it. Why? Because, you know, obviously, if you know anything about cats, man, going in with all these walkie talkies, 1742, echoing all over the walls. I got all this gear and flashlights and pepper spray. Everybody's in there smelling weird like equipment. That cat is not going to like it. If you know anything about cats, man, that's going to rile that cat up and it's going to be all. Lieutenant Duncan didn't want a hair on its head disturbed. And so that cell became untouchable. Okay. And this created a, I mean, naturally, listen, inmates are going to be inmates. No matter how you know, straight down the line, you know, the, the straight and narrow path. He's a, you know, he's flying down the, the, the righteous way here. This inmate who's, who's in charge of this cat. Listen, money is money. And uh, he saw a business opportunity. 
anyone who has contraband and has enough money, pay me. And when we get word that the shakedowns are coming, because listen, I, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes on this video telling you how all the different various ways that inmates know shakedowns are coming. It's funny because I'll always see comments on videos. How do these inmates have cell phones? Don't the guards come? Look. Inmates are generally nine times out of 10, uh, five steps ahead. Anytime anything is about to happen, they know hours beforehand and, and take necessary precautions. I'll just leave it. Just take my word for it. Um, so anytime we got word that a shakedown was happening, and one of these teams was coming to search. If you had the, the right finances, you could bring all your contraband to this inmate. He would hold it. And his cell was guaranteed to never get searched. You wouldn't get found with any contraband. You wouldn't get in trouble. You wouldn't go to solitary confinement. And you would get to keep your several thousand dollar contraband cell phone. Or drugs or knives or anything. You know, whatever. Win-win for everybody. And all this was made possible because of the cat in his room. And so therefore, and listen, it was very often, as soon as this guy, I mean, he's got to leave his cell. When he steps out of his cell in the morning to, to use the bathroom and brush his teeth, take a shower, just like any other person would need to, that cat will like dart out of nowhere and run out of that cell. It will run all over the cell block. It will run in the, you know, it, it, and Lieutenant Duncan generally didn't want that. She wanted it to stay in his cell, you know. But when it did get loose, which was quite often, oh, you better believe, not an inmate in there would harm a hair on, on its little head. In fact, they go out of their way to be nice to it, pet it, soothe it, coax it back to where it was supposed to be. Inmates who had an excess of finances and canteen, they would donate packs of tuna, salmon that you can buy on the commissary just to help, you know, even though this cat had all the cat food, he could ask for it was being brought in man oh they i mean this is gourmet special dishes the chefs of the dorm would cook up for this cat they loved this cat this cat was keeping everyone safe it, they adored this cat i did too i had contraband myself i loved that cat and nobody nobody you better not Almost step on that cat. You better not kick that cat. You better not shoe that. You better respect that cat. We love that cat. Okay. We want it to stay happy. We're going to feed it. People are putting extra items on their canteen snack lists just to bring to this cat to feed it well because they're so appreciative of this cat. So, hey, you call that what you want. I don't know a single inmate that's getting gourmet dishes cooked for it just because of who they are. But this cat was, I don't know anybody who steps out of their cell and everyone goes out of their way. Oh, oh you know, just to be so nice and make sure every accommodation is, is, is there for this, this, this person, this being in the cell block, but that cat was. Okay. And now if that ain't running and, and uh, if that's not running a cell block, I don't know what it is. That cat had more pull, more love, more respect, more invincibility than anyone I've ever seen in my 10 years of prison. And you know what? I think that's pretty wholesome. And as far as I know, you know, I got out of prison. I left that yard. I went to another yard and, you know, went on about my, my life. But as far as I know, hey, I, I hope and pray that cat's still living and still going strong uh, and still ruling that cell block with an iron paw. Thanks for watching. See you next time.